Littman's Mannequin Girl. It is a lovely novel about a girl with scoliosis in Gorbachev's Moscow. Coming of age is never easy, but imagine it's the 1980s, the Soviet Union is collapsing, and oh, by the way, your parents' marriage is falling apart. It's really a lovely book. I love writing across gender, and I think that's at least in part because, well, your gender is way more interesting than my gender. One of my favorite reviews of my books is from one of the trade journals way back in 1996. It was from Midwives, which is narrated by Connie Danforth. And the review ends, An added benefit of this novel is the candor and the honesty with which Chris Bojallian writes about her experiences in labor and what it must have been like for her to give birth. Doesn't get better than that. The fact is, though, I like to write across gender because so often I'm putting my characters on an emotional journey that demands an openness that a lot of guys, exhibit A, just don't have. No, I grew up as a dog person, always had dogs. However, I fell madly in love with Victoria Bluer, who was a cat person, and Victoria made it really clear to me when we fell in love at the age of 18, love me, love my cats, now we have five. We had six up until a few weeks ago when we lost one after 17 years. It happens. You know, my characters aren't precisely me. And I think that's probably a good thing because when I do have a first-person male narrator, usually kind of dislikable. People, my readers, not big fans of Stephen Drew in Secrets of Eden, Will Banks in Transistor Radio. So I'm glad that I'm not necessarily my characters because they tend to be more charismatic and more likable. Now, even if I do not inhabit them, I care about them deeply. I don't think a day went by when I was writing Close Your Eyes, Hold Hands when my heart was not breaking for Emily Shepard. There's a reason that the book's epigraph is, if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. Well, really blessed to have a daughter who was 19 years old when I was writing this novel. She's now 20. She's a young actor. She lives in New York City. And when I was writing this book, a day didn't go by when I wouldn't send her a text asking her a question saying, okay, I need a, another euphemism for wasted. I need a euphemism for hookup. I'm not finding what I want on Urban Dictionary. What do you recommend? And she would instantly text me back five or six perfect, perfect euphemisms and words. For example, my favorite word from Close Your Eyes, Hold Hands, bitch cakes. I love it. What does bitch cakes mean? Meltdown mad. You are just furious when you are bitch cakes. First, I love your use of the word chameleon. I just read a blog review of Close Your Eyes, Hold Hands last night that referred to me as a literary chameleon because I seem to move back and forth between historical fiction contemporary literary fiction, and in my contemporary fiction, I'm as likely to be a transsexual lesbian in transistor radio as I am Emily Shepard, a teen in trouble in Close Your Eyes, Hold Hands. Um, I don't have a preference for historical fiction versus contemporary fiction. I just know I want to write about an issue or a story that I care about deeply and hang around for a year or two of my life with characters who really mean something to me. And so in a book like Close Your Eyes, Hold Hands, when Emily Shepard says in the prologue about her friend Andrea, who she's not seen in forever, I worry about her. I worry about her a lot. I do too. I don't think a day goes by when I don't think about Laurel Estabrook, my narrator from The Double Bind. I worry about her too, because of course, when we last see Laurel Estabrook, Spoiler alert, we know she's in a psychiatric hospital.